Chapter 46, Caring for Clients with Disorders of the Lower GI Tract. Constipation, the cause um, are a number of things. Uh, peristalsis is not working. Um, abdomen is distended and perhaps um, obstructed. And um, also lack of fiber, lack of water. Um, as you get older, your muscles relax. Um, normal defecation process includes peristalsis, um, distension of the rectal area, and gastrocolic reflex, and stool retention, um, stool passage. Stool retention, however, is um, causes uh, constipation, insufficient dietary fiber and water, impaired GI mobility, certain medications, especially opioids, systemic disorders from the uh, neural part of the brain with um, certain muscle uh, involvement, also endocrine, like diabetes, can cause constipation. Anatomic disorders can cause strictures and stenosis. And um, in addition, lead poisoning can cause constipation. Um, MS is a, a neuro condition that causes constipation as well as spinal cord uh, lesions and injuries. Assessment findings include infrequent BMs, distended abdomen, and tympani heard when you percuss the abdomen. Also, encopresis, which is passing of a liquid stool around the fecal um, mass. Uh, very foul smelling and very liquidy. Um, diagnostic findings on examination include the radiography, a barium enema, anal rectal motility studies, defecography, and colonic transit. Medical and surgical treatment um, treat the cause. You can provide enemas, laxatives, stool softeners, and change your diet. Is the following statement true or false? The stomach is part of the lower GI system. The answer is false. The stomach is part of the upper GI system. Diarrhea is frequent stool, liquid, or semi-liquid. This is an increase in peristalsis that is abnormal, and it does result in dehydration. The causes include bacteria, viral, short bowel syndrome, medication, and feeding tubes. The assessment findings are you're going to have a frequent liquid stool, hyperactive bowel sounds, and tenesmus. And tenesmus is the urgency to have a bowel movement. Diagnostic findings include stool cultures, ova and parasites, uh, analysis, hemocult testing, proctosigmoidoscopy, colonoscopy, and endoscopy. Medical and surgical management depends on the duration. You give antidiarrheals if it's not, um, if it is prolonged. Also, you need to replace fluid and electrolytes and give probiotics. Is the following true or false? A patient with diarrhea has hypoactive bowel sounds on auscultation of the abdomen. The diagnostic findings include uh, stool analysis, WBC count, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, elevation, uh, barium enema, endoscopy examinations, biopsy, upper GI series with a small bowel follow-through. Medical management is supportive through diet, TPN, we've talked about that, IV therapy, whole blood, medications, anti-diarrheals, anti-peristaltics, five ASAs, which is a salicylate type group of medicines, corticosteroids, immune modulators, and infliximab. You can see those in your book and read more about those. Surgical management is reserved for complications. Um, one of the surgeries creates a shorter bowel. Uh, that's why it's called short bowel syndrome. Also, you could have an intestinal transplant, uh, which is more common these days. And if everything else does not work, um, eventually an ileostomy 
that's permanent. 75% of the people require um, surgery within 20 years of symptom onset, and 90% require surgery within 30 years of onset. Acute abdominal inflammatory disorders. Um, we're talking about appendicitis. The appendix is located on the tip of the cecum. This normally fills with food and empties digested food, um, but on occasion it will get obstructed and a hard mass of feces will form in this area, causing inflammation and bacterial infection. This is what causes appendicitis. Assessment findings are right lower quadrant pain, McBurney's point which is uh, an area between the, um, the umbilicus and the right iliac crest where the patient exhibits rebound tenderness. Also a positive Rosving sign, which is when you palpate the abdomen. On the left lower quadrant, the client actually feels severe pain on the right lower quadrant. And this is a, a usually a positive indication of appendicitis. Also, you wanna do lab tests um, WBC counts, abdominal ultrasounds, and CT scans. The medical and surgical management is antibiotics, IV fluids, and an apodectomy. If this ruptures, because it can, because remember it's uh, inflamed and swollen, uh, it can cause peritonitis, and which means that the fecal matter um, leaks into the peritoneum the sac lining the abdominal cavity, which becomes inflamed, and that then causes a serious um, fevers and also can cause septicemia. Now, this is another acute abdominal inflammatory disorder called peritonitis. This is due to inflammation of the peritoneum. This can happen from a perforated peptic ulcer, a bowel that's uh, perforated, an appendix that um, perforated, or I should say, yes, uh, the appendix perforated and all the um, stool, the E. coli leaked out. Irritable bowel disease can cause it, ruptured etopic, uh, ectopic pregnancies, infection from peritoneal dialysis, and any kind of bacteria and um, abdominal trauma can cause this. Signs and symptoms are lack of bowel motility. Uh, eventually, another sign would be uh, increased pulse, rapid respirations, um, air and fluid get trapped in the bowel, and the fluid shifts to the abdomen. Uh, abdomen and um, this causes hypotension and hypovolemic shock or septic shock. Um, di diagnostic findings. <clears throat> diagnostic findings include WBC count, radiograph, CT scan, ultrasounds, CNS of the uh, peritoneal fluid, um, which often you'll find E. coli. Um, medical and surgical management include NG tubes, NG tube, IV fluids, electrolytes, antibiotics, antiemetics, and um, you need to surgically close that perforation of the uh, peritoneum. Um, pain meds would include Demerol and um, morphine sulfate, antiemetics, and again, surgically close the perforation. Intestinal obstruction. Uh, this is more common in the small intestine. Uh, if it does occur in the large intestine, it's usually in the sigmoid colon. Um, the blockage interferes with normal progression of intestinal contents. It could be functional. Also, it could be mechanical. It causes a large um, bowel. The pathophysiology and um, 
etiology is, uh, again, mechanical, full or partial blockage, um, and could also be twisting of the intestines or intussusception, which is one part of the intestine uh, actually goes into another part of the intestine. Assessment findings include emesis, cramping, um, and abnormal stools. Diagnostic uh, findings would be radiographic study, serum electrolyte tests, metabolic alkalosis, WBC count, and hematocrit level. Medical and surgical management include IV fluids, electrolytes, antibiotics, intestinal decompression, an NG tube, a colonoscopy, um, a surgery through the colonoscopy, and possibly an ostomy. On page 817 in TIMBI, this goes over all the possible surgical um, course of events if one were to be treated for this. Diverticulitis and diverticulosis. Um, this is herniation of the GI tract of the mucosa. The diverticulosis is um, a symptomatic, asymptomatic diverticula, meaning there's no symptoms with this. Diverticulitis is symptomatic. It's inflamed diverticula, which is little pouches, usually in the colon. Um, this is due to low fiber intake, um, congenital predisposition, so a family history, inflammation, and abscesses, and fistulas. Um, assessment findings including alternating constipation with diarrhea and rectal bleeding and um, because of the intestinal diverticular pouching. On findings, um, you're going to use diagnostic findings. You're going to use a stool specimen, CT scan, barium enema, and colonoscopy, medical and surgical. Uh, management includes avoiding foods containing seeds, high fiber diets uh, is promoted, IV fluids, antibiotics, colectomies, and possibly colostomies. Abdominal hernia. This is um, protrusion of the intestine or stomach in vulnerable, vulnerable areas. If it's reducible, that means the uh, provider may push the organ back inside. If it's irreducible, it's going to be pouching out and you can't push it back in. If it does become strangulated, in other words, um, the blood supply is cut off, it can become gangrenous. The pathophysiology and etiology is common to the inguinal, umbilical, femoral, and incisional area of a hernia, as you can see by the picture. Assessment findings, you're going to have abdominal swelling, protrusion, and can cause intestinal obstruction and pain. Medical and surgical management means you can remove the hernia surgically. You can uh, have a uh, brace, if you will, over the hernia to keep it in place. Um, and a laparoscopy approach can be used to reinforce the area with wire or mesh, and it's not... Um, necessarily a surgical repair. It's just a supportive measure. The nursing assessment uh, management is um, assessing for further pain, uh, which would require surgery, um, and protecting the area. Colon and rectal cancer. The path and phys uh, includes benign adenoma, adenocarcinoma, polyps, genetics, lifestyle, and environment. Assessment findings are bowel habit changes, occult blood in the stool, and distended abdomen. Um, diagnostic findings include CBC, barium enema, colonoscopy, genetic markers, and a CEA test, which is, again, a tumor marker that shows up in lab value, and biopsies are used. Medical and surgical management are the polyps are examined um, they use radiography and endoscopy. Colorectal cancer requires surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, colectomy, segmental resection, and abdominal per perineal resection, which means that they're basically removing the cancer and uh, connecting the two opposing areas of uh, the uninvolved, uh, if you will, uh, back together, okay, of the colon. Hemorrhoids are dilated veins um, in or outside the anal sphincter 
um, due to chronic straining, um, diarrhea, also weakens this tissue, and prolonged sitting. Assessment findings include external hemorrhoids, soreness, lumps, bleeding, internal hemorrhoids, which can also slide out on occasion, um, anemia, and um, protrusion of, again, the internal hemorrhoids. Diagnostic findings include an anoscope, a proctosigma scope, and medical and surgical treatment include a symptomatic treatment. You can have a hemorrhoidectomy um, done by laser or convectional surgery. Um, you can wear a T-binder after that for support. Um, and again, they're going to... Hemorrhoids are dilated veins um, in and outside the anal sphincter. The um, cause is chronic straining, diarrhea, and prolonged sitting. Assessment findings are external hemorrhoids, soreness, lumps, bleeding, um, internal hemorrhoids, and also protrusion of internal hemorrhoids. You could have bleeding as well. Diagnostic findings uh, are they use an anoscope and a proctosigmoidoscope. Medical and surgical management includes symptomatic treatment, um, various ointments, um, analgesics, antibiotics, and they can do surgery. Um, an IND and um, support with a T binder. Anorectal abscesses are infections with pus collection between external and internal sphincters. The pathophys and etiology is microbes uh, transmitted through anal intercourse or foreign bodies inserted into the rectum. Assessment findings include pain, edema, uh, a mass, fever, and foul smelling drainage. Medical and surgical management is pain relievers, analgesics, antibiotics, incision, and drainage. Anal fissures are a tear in the anal canal. Um, the cause is constipation or anal trauma. Assessment findings are bleeding and constipation. You can use an endoscopy to look uh, to uh, diagnose. The medical and surgical treatment is anesthetic creams, analgesic sits baths, constipation prevention, and surgical excision. Anal fistula is uh, anal ca canal tract formation, and the cause is an inadequate healing of the anal rectal abscess that you may have. Assessment findings include pain, redness, and pus. Uh, diagnostic findings through a proctosigmoidoscopy and a colonoscopy. Medical and surgical management includes antibiotics, a fistulotomy, fistulectomy, uh, and a non cutting seton. And the non cutting seton is a um, suture or drain placed inside the opening of the fistula into the lumen of the anal canal and back out, and it's tied to itself to drain. Pyloneidal sinus and cyst is an infection in the hair follicles of the sacrococcygeal area. The pathophys and etiology is inadequate personal hygiene, obesity, or trauma. Assessment findings is deep intergluteal cleft and abundant hair, pain and swelling, and purulent drainage. Medical and surgical management include uh, drainage of the abscess, incision, packing, and wound healing via secondary intention, which means they leave it open. Nursing management is um, comfort levels and providing medication and teaching.